What's up, everyone? Happy Wednesday. Today we are on week two, day three, and today is going to be leg day. So there's two parts to the workout today. We're going to start with the basic, a simple circuit, 10 stations, 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off. We're going to go through three rounds. That's going to take up most of the time. Once we're done that, we're going to do a little finisher. That's still going to be legs, but a little bit more cardio to really get that heart rate up. So as usual, we have a good mix of quads, glutes, and hamstrings. So what we did here for the circuit is we put all of the muscle groups together so you get a little more tension, a little bit more of that muscle activation in a row. So we're gonna start off with some of the hamstring and glute exercises, and then we'll finish off with more of the quad exercises later on. So the first exercise here is a 1.5 rep deadlift. The 1.5 is just emphasizing that time under tension, so you're focusing more time on the low part of the deadlift. So you can use both your weights here, nice and heavy here, you know for leg day, if you can use your heavier weights, now is the time to do it. So you're gonna get down into that deadlift, bottom part, come back up about halfway, back down, stand up tall. Keeping your back straight the whole time, weight should be on the heels, you'll do that for 30 seconds. The next one is going to be a frog pump. You can do this one with or without a dumbbell. With the frog pump, it's similar to the hip bridge. You're going to bring the soles of your feet together and drive your knees out. Place that weight if you are using one on your hips and then drive those hips up. Come back down nice and control. Remember, get a good squeeze in your glutes as you come up. And the third one, we did a reverse plank variation with the push exercise or workout, I should say, but we're also going to do a reverse plank variation here for hamstrings. So a couple of you mentioned that you're feeling in the hamstrings, totally normal, but a totally different variation that's going to get them activated even more. So get this type of reverse plank on your elbows, straight legs, and then one leg off the ground at a time. And you're going to really feel the hamstring of that planted foot activate as you lift up the other one. After that, You'll need a wall here. If you don't have a wall, I'll show you a different variation. We'll call this one a fixed deadlift. So one foot is against that wall. Press that foot down as hard as you can against the wall. The other leg is out in front. Hinge from the hips. So what this does is it really emphasizes the front hamstring while giving you a little bit more support. You can always modify and do a kickstand deadlift if you don't have access to the wall or if you're not comfortable with that. We have three rounds here, so I always like to choose to do my weaker side for an extra set, but that's up to you. Now we're going to transition more to quads. So we're going to do a kneel to stand. You can do this one with or without weights. I would suggest using weights if you can. Kneeling position, stand, back down, switch legs. Make sure you're not always pushing off on the same side. If you're using one dumbbell, right by the chest. If you want to go body weight, that's fine. If you want to make it even easier, hold on to a wall just to give you a little bit more balance and support. After that, we're going to do lean backs. This one, you don't need any weight. Kneeling position, a little bit easier if you flex the toes here. You want to keep your hips locked the whole time. Arms out to provide a little bit of counterbalance. Lean back, and then bring your weight forward. This is a really good exercise to strengthen the muscles around that patella tendon, so to support the knees, but also to build up the quads. The lower you can go down, the better. Obviously, if you can't get down as low as I can, that's okay, just do what you can do here. Next, you're gonna get into a wall sit position. So if you have access to a wall, get into a wall sit, and from here, you're gonna do marches. So one leg off the wall at a time, alternating between those two. If you don't have access to a wall, you can just do a squat hold. You can try to do the march with a squat hold, but it makes it that much harder as well. Next, we're going to do a sissy squat. This one, if you have access to the wall, makes it a little bit easier. You don't need to, but you might need something to help you with support. Don't need any dumbbells for this one. This one, you're going to stay on your tippy toes the whole time. What you're going to do here is, this is the one variation where we're going to actively drive the knees forward as our body leans back. So if you want to use that support, knees forward, lean back as low as you can, and then come back. So this exercise, just like the lean backs, really targets those quads. Keep your heels off the ground as well, lean back. Great exercise for strengthening the knees. If you can't get down as low, if you want to modify, grab a dumbbell and do a goblet squat instead. But practice this one on your own as well. 
Next, we're gonna do a forward lunge. One weight, two weights. Of course, if you're using two dumbbells, it's gonna make it a little more challenging. So try with two. And for this one, you're just gonna step forward. Alternate legs. Keep your chest up, keep your back straight the whole time. And the last exercise here is a squat clean. So you're gonna start with the dumbbells down by your sides, catch the shoulders, squat, drop. Squat, drop. More of a coordination exercise than anything else, but think about just the front squat, and then as you stand up, drop the weights. If you have to pause the video just to get that technique down pat, that's okay. So we'll do that for three rounds, then we'll take a break, and we'll do that finisher. So we'll start off in about 30 seconds or so with the 1.5 rep deadlift. Okay, so nice and heavy here if you can. This one we're trying to really emphasize the hamstrings, feeling it in the back of your legs. So we'll begin in three, two, one. Let's go, 1.5 rep deadlift. So feet about hip width apart. Get down nice and low, very slight bend in the knees. Get down low, stop halfway, back down, drive up. So you want to feel this one in the back of your legs, actively puffing that chest up and push your butt back towards the wall. You've got about 10 seconds to go. Frog pumps are coming up next. Three, two, one. So take 15 seconds. You can do the frog pump with or without weight. If you're using the weight, you're placing it on your hips. Soles of the feet together, knees out. Okay, three, two, one. Let's go. Think of this as just another variation of the hip bridge. You can choose whichever one you prefer. So if you like the hip bridge better, especially if you feel more of the wounds, feel free to go back to the hip bridge. This variation is really good for people who have either tight hip flexors or tight quads. So if you're doing a hip bridge and you feel mostly the quads or hip flexors, try a quad pump that helps kind of disengage those muscles to really get the glutes active. Three, two, one. Next one, reverse plank position, and you're gonna actively bring one foot off the ground at a time. So we we'll call these reverse plank kicks. Try to keep your legs as straight as you can. In three, two, one. So reverse plank, heels on the ground, lift one leg up. If you have really good control here and you want to speed it up, you can definitely do that as fast as you go, the harder it's gonna be. Try to keep your hips up, keep those shoulders relaxed. Dig your heels in. This is one of those exercises that looks easy, but it's more challenging than it looks. You've got about 10 seconds to go. Okay, three, two, one. Next, we have fixed deadlift. So one foot against the wall here. You can do a kickstand deadlift if you prefer. Okay, three, two, one. So you're actively pushing that foot into the wall. Slight bend in that front leg. Lean forward. You want to feel this one in the back of your front leg. So right in the hamstrings. We're about halfway there. You'll notice for hamstrings, we do a lot of hip bridges and a lot of deadlifts. Because those are the two best movements, hip hinging and bridging, to get the hamstrings and glutes working. Three, two, one. All right, so now we're gonna do some quads. We're gonna do a kneel to stand. You can go two weights, one dumbbell, or a body weight. Switch legs so you're not always pushing off from the same side. Three, two, one. Kneel to stand. Keeping your body nice and controlled as well, so you're not rotating too much side to side. Really trying to keep those shoulders squared in front. Remember, if you need to modify here, hold on to a wall, drop the weights, do what you gotta do to make it nice and controlled. This is another functional movement to sitting and standing, kneeling and standing, something we do all the time. Three, two, one. Next, we're gonna do those lean backs. No weights needed here, kneeling position, toes flexed, keep your hips locked, lean back, and then stand back up. Gonna really hit the quads here. Okay, three, two, one, toes flexed, hips locked, lean back, and then come back up. Make sure you keep those knees down on the ground the whole time. 
the lower you go, the more you're gonna feel your body trying to bring the knees off the ground. But you wanna to try to prevent that from happening. You should feel a really good stretch in your quads on the way down. Notice that I'm going slow, back is straight, hips are locked, so there's no bend in the hips. Three, two, one. All right, so next we're gonna do a wall sit with the march. If the march is too hard, wall sit's fine. You can also do a squat hold. Squat hold is actually a little bit harder than the wall sit as well. Okay, three, two, one. Getting in that wall sit position. If you're feeling good, if you're feeling comfortable, you're just gonna lift one knee off the ground and back. Otherwise, the technique is the same for a wall sit. So feet are flat on the ground. Try to keep your shoulders back against the wall as well. You'll notice it's a lot harder to do the march than to just hold that wall set position. It requires a lot more strength in the body. Three, two, one. All right, next we have that sissy squat. So against the wall, just for that balance and support, stay on your tippy toes, drive your knees forward as you lean back. Try to get down as low as you can. You might have to pause and repeat here. Okay, ready? Let's go. So knees forward, lean back. Knees should be almost down towards the ground. If you're able to do this one with relative comfort, it tells me that you have good strong tendons, ligaments, and muscles supporting the knee. So it's a really good prehab and rehab exercise. As long as you're able to do it. Remember, you can modify any regular goblet spots instead if you prefer. Three, two, one. All right, we've got two more here. Forward lunge, then a squat clean. Then we'll take a break, and we'll go through two more rounds after this. So forward lunge, try with the two weights here. Okay, three, two, one. Stepping forward, nice and neutral. Chest is up, back stays straight. Make sure that front foot is flat on the ground, so it's not like you're lunging forward with the heel coming up. You want to keep it as flat as you can. Halfway. All three legs. If your knees are bothering you, you can always go back into a reverse lunge, which is a bit more of a knee-friendly lunge variation. Three, two, one. Okay, last one here is a squat clean. Weights by your side, catch, squat, drop. So if it takes you a couple tries, pause the video, practice until you get it, and then resume. Okay, three, two, one. So you're gonna catch, squat, drop. So good coordination here. Not just working the legs, but also the shoulders, the core, posture, and because we're working so many muscles here, really gets that heart rate up. You got about 10 seconds to go. It's the last set of the first round. Three, two, one. And break. Take 45 seconds, we'll move for round two. So I'm sure by now you realize each round is going to get progressively harder because your muscles are getting more fatigued. So the first round doesn't start off too bad, but it definitely gets more challenging as we go. We're going to start with that 1.5 rep right deadlift in about 20 seconds. So the first half of the circuit, it's mostly hamstrings and glutes. Second half, mostly quads. Okay, let's get ready for round two here. 1.5 deadlift. In three, two, one. Let's go, so hinge, nice and low. Halfway, back down, drive up. And of course, if you're not comfortable with this, too many, uh, too many steps for you, just do a regular deadlift. This just helps give a little bit more time under tension, so you're holding that stretch position for a longer time than a regular deadlift. We've got about 10 seconds to go. Frog pumps coming up next. Three, two, one. Frog pump. Remember, you can do this one with or without the weight. Make sure with this exercise that you bring your feet in nice and close. Don't allow them to be too far out in front of you. Okay, three, two, one. On your back. Feet together, knees out, drive. Make sure you give those glutes a squeeze 
at the top of that bridge. So you're squeezing your glutes, squeezing those butt muscles as hard as you can for a second or two before slowly bringing your hips down. We're going halfway there. We have the reverse plank kicks next. Just under 10 seconds. Keep those feet close to your body. Three, two, one. So the reverse plank kicks on your back, you'll be on the elbows. Bring the hips up, straight legs. One leg comes off the ground at a time. Okay, we're gonna begin in three, two, one. Get in that position first, get nice and comfortable. And then one leg at a time. Remember, really dig those heels into the ground. So as you lift one leg up, it helps if you actively push down with the other leg. To create a little bit more stability so your body's not going too much side to side. Of course, if you can't do these kicks, just hold the position, but really try to emphasize keeping your hips up and working those hands. Three, two, one. Next, we have the fixed deadlift with the wall. This time, you're going to switch legs, so opposite side. Okay, three, two, one. Same thing, so hinge and stand. And with more of a single leg or single arm stuff, you might find that one side's a little more comfortable than the other, which is why you want to practice that weaker side for an extra set anytime we do these odd set workouts. You got about 10 seconds to go. Feeling that good stretch in the back of your front leg. Weight is on your heels here. Three, two, one. All right, so next we're gonna do a heel to stand. Same thing as last time, nice and controlled, with or without weights. Switch legs so you're not able to push them off on the same side. Ready, three, two, one. And as usual, like I just mentioned, one side's gonna be more comfortable than the other. So, unless you're remembering to switch legs each set, or each rep, you're probably gonna end up stepping up from the same side each time, because it's more comfortable to you. But that just helps perpetuate the very problem that you're trying to fix, which is that one side is stronger than the other. Almost there. Make sure you're not caving forward. Three, two, one. Okay, hey, lean back next. So you're gonna be on your knees, lean back, come forward. Remember to flex your toes here. Three, two, one. So the reason I'm bringing my arms up in front is just for counterbalance. You don't need to do that. But it's easier to control yourself if you have that counterbalance. So hips are locked here. If you can get down low, great. If not, get down as low as you can. You really want to feel this one of the quads, especially the lower part of the quads, right above the knee. Keep those knees down. Three, two, one. Okay, so next we're gonna get into a wall sit. We're gonna do the marches. So again, you can hold the wall sit instead. You can do a squat hold instead. Modify as needed. These are more of an advanced progressive variation. Progressive variation. Ready? Let's go. Face and low. Dig in, and then step up. First rep is always the hardest because you don't have any momentum going. So once you get that first rep, try to continue with that rhythm, that momentum. Keep your head back, keep your shoulders back. Common mistake with wall sits is allowing your body to lean forward. But use that wall from your hips all the way up to your head. Three, two, one. All right, so next we're gonna do little sissy squats. So using that wall to help out. If you want to switch sides, you can, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. You should be getting equal distribution with both legs. Okay, three, two, one. So this is a really good exercise for those who want to build the legs, but don't have any equipment at all or only have light weights at home. So it's a really good quad builder just by manipulating some biomechanics if you don't have a heavy weight to squat or lunge. This gets the same thing done with no equipment at all. Three, two, one. Forward lunges next. 
And now 60 squat out of all the exercises here, probably gonna be the toughest on the quads. So that's the one you should get the most uh, lactic acid and pump into those quads. Forward lunges, ready? Let's go, two more sets here. And then we'll take a break before going on to that third and final round. Keeping your chest up, keep your back straight. So you shouldn't be necessarily exhausted here, but you should definitely start to feel those legs getting a little heavier, maybe not quite the same amount of energy you had at the end of round one. Almost there. Three, two, one. All right, last one here is that squat clean. So catch, squat, and then drop it. And this is set number 10. So last one here with that second, uh, second round. Okay, three, two, one. So catch, squat, drop. Notice when I'm squatting, my knees are tracking over my feet, not allowing the knees to cave in. Both feet stay flat on the ground. Don't allow the heels to come up, especially during the squat. You got about 10 seconds to go. If you want to make it harder, you just speed it up, make it a little more explosive, gets the same job done. Three, two, one, and break. Let's take 45 seconds, and then we'll get to round three. So typically we're going to do a little more quads than hamstrings and glutes for a couple reasons. One, there's a lot more variations you can do with quads. And two, your quads are bigger than your hamstrings. So your quads, as the name suggests, has four muscles, the hamstrings, three. So you always want to put a little more emphasis on the bigger muscle groups here. We're going to do the 1.5 rep right down with the three sets. Get ready. In three, two, one. 1.5 reps, so down, halfway, down, and then stand. Nice and slow. This one's all about control, muscle activation, taking your time. Keep those dumbbells close to your body the whole time. It's almost like you're scraping them up and down your legs. They should never travel up too far up in front of your body, otherwise you'll start to feel them in the low back. Three, two, one. Okay, frog pump up next. Remember, if you don't like these frog pumps, you can do a hip reach instead. Personally, I feel the frog pumps a little more in my glutes than I do in the hip reach. So choose the one that you prefer. Three, two, one. So this one you want to feel almost exclusively in the glutes. For those of you who have really tight adductors, might feel it a little bit in the inside part of your leg just because they're getting stretched and uh, you might not have that mobility, and that's okay, as long as you're feeling it mostly in the glutes. So give them a good squeeze at the top, come back down, nice and controlled. You got less than 10 seconds to go. Three, two, one. Okay, so reverse plank holds on your elbows, on your back, try to keep those hips up, dig in with the heels. Okay, three, two, one, get to that position, hips up, heels down, and then keeping your legs straight, one leg comes off at a time. Halfway. Just goes to show you, you don't need, it's good if you have weights, but you don't need to have weights because there's so many different ways you can train body weight and get great results. Three, two, one. So we're gonna do that fixed deadlift. Choose your weaker side here. I'll let you know when it's halfway just in case you wanna switch, but sometimes that transition takes a little too long. Okay, three, two, one. Let's go, so foot against the wall, slight bend in that front leg, and then complete that full deadlift. So this is gonna be a more challenging deadlift variation, of course, because it's single leg, and there's just a lot more weight per leg than a regular deadlift or even a Romanian deadlift variation as well. Sorry, I didn't give you the halfway there. Three, two, one. All right, we're gonna get back to some quads. 
Kneel to stay. Four down, we got six sets to go for this final round here before moving on to the short finisher. Okay, three, two, one. Kneel to stay. Take your time. A lot of these exercises are really good at identifying and correcting any sort of weaknesses or imbalances that you have. Because like I said, this is a functional movement. It should come naturally, but I know a lot of people struggle with the kneel to stand. So it's good to keep working on exercises like this, even if you need a little bit of uh, support with the wall. Three, two, one. All right, so next we're gonna do the lean backs. No weights here. Feet planted, flex the toes, makes it a little bit easier. You can also go flat, flat foot if you like, but that's a bit more of a challenge. Okay, three, two, one. Hips are locked, shoulders down and back. Low as you can, and then come back up. Make sure both knees are down on the ground. Try to as much as you can distribute that weight evenly. You might notice that one side is doing most of the work. Try to focus on the other side if you can as well. Three, two, one. Okay, so next we're gonna do wall sit marches. We got four sets to go here. So now is when the legs are gonna start to feel a little heavy. Okay, three, two, one. Nice and low. Step one, leg up. This is one of those exercises, the more you do it, the better you get at it. First time you do it, it's surprising how difficult it is to actually lift one of those legs up. But once you get the hang of it, you start to figure out the cues, the tricks. The trick is keep your feet close and plant that foot down as hard as you can as you bring your other knee up. Three, two, one. Hey, sissy squats. Three more sets. And then we'll take a nice long break before getting into that really quick finisher to just burn us out. Okay, three, two, one. You don't have to use the wall here, but it really helps with the balance and support. Two things, knees forward, back knees back. And you're on the balls of your feet here. This is the one squat variation other than a hack squat where you're actively driving the hole off the ground. Because usually it's the other way around. So listen to the cues because it's really exercise dependent. Three, two, one. Forward lunges. Two more sets. Okay, three, two, one. Step forward, chest up. Back straight, and just alternating legs here. The forward lunge is a little bit more of a quad dominant, dominant lunge variation. It requires a little bit more balance. And uh, like I said, it's a little harder on the knees for those of you who have bad knees. But for those of you who don't have bad knees, it shouldn't be a problem, especially if you're doing it correctly, making sure that you're driving up from that front heel. Three, two, one. Okay, last one here. Squat clean. Round three, last exercise, round three. Okay, three, two, one. So you're gonna catch, squat down. Of course, you'd rather just do the squat without the hand clean, especially if it's a coordination or balance issue. You can modify. We're just trying to get those legs working here. This one makes it a little bit harder because of the fact that we have more muscles engaged, so it becomes more of a cardio exercise as well. Three, two, one, and break. All right, so the last part, just a couple minutes here. There's four exercises. We're gonna do legs with cardio. Timing is 20 seconds on, five second transition, four exercises. We'll take a break after the first round, we'll go again for the second round, and then we're done for today. So we're gonna start with the weighted jump squat. Hold dumbbells here, sit down with that squat, and jump. 
Try to keep your chest up, back straight. Of course, you can modify this one. You can drop the weights, do a body weight jump squat, or just do the squat without the jump. Of course, those variations make it a lot easier too. So if that's what you want, feel free to modify. Second exercise, we're gonna do a swing. This exercise is the one exercise that I prefer to use kettlebells. So if you have a kettlebell, use the kettlebell, especially if you have a heavy one, for the swing. If you're using a dumbbell, that's why to hold it is probably like this. Feet between hip and shoulder width apart. Think about it like a deadlift, except explosive. Hinge back, drive forward. You don't want that weight coming all the way overhead. It's not a shoulder exercise. It's a hip dominant exercise. Stretching the hamstrings on the way back, squeezing the glutes on the way forward. You want to feel this one in the hamstrings and cardio. Shouldn't feel it in the back at all. Feeling it in the back, chances are you're doing this kind of a swing. So if you need to modify jumping jacks, high knees, if you're feeling it in the back, feel free to modify. Next, we're going to do skater jumps. So no weights here. You're going to use one leg, push off, land, and jump. So make sure you land with a nice soft knee, and then you're going to push off side to side. The more explosive you can be here, the better. And then the last one, another advanced variation, the jumping lunge. No weights needed, chest up, back straight, alternate that jump. Notice my body's not caving in. Of course, if you want to modify any lunge variation or any cardio variation, like I said with the last one, jumping jacks, high knees, burpees, you choose. All right, so four exercises, 20 on, five off, weight and jump squat, swings, skater hops, jumping lunge. We'll get started in about 30 seconds. All right, we're gonna start with everyone's favorite, the weight and jump squat. This one's gonna really get that heart rate up. All of these ones, we're gonna burn out your legs as well. So let's finish off so I'm almost done for today. We're going to start in three, two, one, weighted jump squat. So it's like a regular jump squat. The only difference is you're holding on to a pair of dumbbells the whole time. The higher you jump, the harder it's going to be. Make sure you don't cave forward or don't allow those knees to cave in. Track them over the toes the whole time. Three, two, one. One dumbbell, one kettlebell for swings. Ready, let's go. Hinge, push. So this one's gonna be more hamstring dominant, whereas the rest of the exercises are more quad and more glute dominant. Get some speed, some power. Let the hips do all the work, not your arms. Three, two, one. Skate is up next. Okay, ready? Let's go, push up, land, and drop. So try to give yourself at least a half a second to control that landing. Really good for your hip health and hip stability to be able to land, control, and then jump. That tells me you have strong glutes. Okay, three, two, one. Last one, jumping lunges. Ready? Let's go. Chest up, back is straight. Keeping it controlled the whole time, always looking. Straight ahead. Make sure you get that back knee bent. Too many people do this. Right, it's not a scissor. We're dropping down low if you can. Three, two, one, and break. Deep breaths, 30 seconds. One more round, and then we're done for today. Same thing, weighted jump squat, swings, skaters, and jumping lunges. It's a great way to finish off a workout. Leaves you sweating, out of breath, but also working those legs even more. Okay, let's get ready. Three, two, one. Weighted jump squat. Down and jump. Nice and controlled, especially at first. If you're really comfortable with this, you can speed it up, you can go faster, jump higher. But to start, keep your control. Swings are coming up next. Three, Two, one, walk one, and grab your kettlebell. Okay, ready? Let's go. Hinge and push. Digging those heels into the ground here. Feeling a nice stretch. Back of your legs. 10 seconds. 
Skaters coming up next. Three, two, one. All right, skaters, two more sets. Ready? Let's go. Push, land. Notice that my body again isn't doing this. Use your legs, not your back. Bend knee, and then explode. Push it up, side to side. Three, two, one. Last one, jumping lunges, and then we're done for today. Ready? Let's go, save the best for last. Tomorrow's workout is gonna be a full workout of nothing but core. And then Friday, we got our cardio. Sprinkling in some cardio here, of course, as well. Three, two, one, and done. That's it for today, guys. Let me know if you need a workout. Any feedback is welcome. See you all tomorrow for core.